G'day and welcome to The Geek Teacher. In this video, we're going to look at open and file uh, save dialog boxes. Uh, in the process, we're going to look at loading an image into a picture box and then saving that image to your own choice of location uh, from the same image box. So for that, you're going to need Visual Basic. You're also going to need an image. I have this one, wonderful one here of Salman Khan and of course Visual Basic. Now I've called my one uh, open safe picture, which is brilliant. Um, you can call it whatever you like, obviously make it make sense. So onto this form, which I am going to call form main and we're going to call this open save dialogue down here. Uh, we're going to also then scroll up and call it form main. Always name your forms and uh, put a text label in on the top so you can see what it is that you're doing. What we're also going to need then is a picture box. That's this one here. Uh, and we're going to need two buttons. Uh, actually, we might even have three buttons because it would be nice if we could also exit. So we're going to put this one down here and we're going to resize to our heart's content. There we go. Brilliant, That's I'm happy with that. Now we need to name everything. Obviously the picture box needs to be named and we're going to call this pick image just because we can. Uh, the button we're going to call BT, BTN load. This one we're going to call BTN save. So the top one is going to load the picture, this one's going to save the picture, and this one is going to exit, so we're going to call it BTN exit. Now we're going to change some of the properties. The text property on this one we're going to make say exit. This one we're going to say save picture. And this one we're going to say load picture. Brilliant. Now that save picture one doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to do this and select both and show you a nifty little trick. What you can do is, if you have both dragged, you can do both at the same time. And it will actually resize both at exactly the same time to the same amount. Now we've got those funky things. We've got an image box, we've got a button to load the picture, we've got a button to save the picture, and we've got a button to exit the picture. We do not have anything here to... Uh, bring out the open file dialog box or the save file dialog box at this point in time. However, we do actually have those in Visual Basic. And if I come over here to all Windows forms, uh, you can see here we've got folded browser dialog box and that will bring up a um, dialog that lets you select the folder. Can be very useful. Lots of little things built in. Uh, we have a save file dialog and we're going to drag that onto the form. And you'll notice it doesn't stay on the form. It pops down here. Uh, and we are going to call this SFD for save file dialog image. Um, default extension can be whatever you like. I'm going to make mine JPEG, so it'll save as a JPEG. Um, now we're going to make use of Visual Basic's built-in image saving properties and so forth. Uh, you can do whatever you like with it. Um, if you're saving a text file, which we'll do in another one, you can use that there as well. So this is saving it. They've got one for opening as well, so there's open file dialog and we're going to call this OFD image. Uh, the file name we're going to call um, image name. Excellent. And that will save it. Now by themselves they don't actually do anything but uh, you can call them in code and it will do a lot of wonderful stuff and that's what we're going to do. So let's go and comment everything so that we know what we're doing. If I double click on load picture, it will bring up this code view and I'm going to type in my comment that's going to tell us what we're going to do. We're going to show the open file dialog and when a picture is chosen, or if a picture is chosen I should say, load it into the picture box. Brilliant. Makes sense, yes. Save picture. We are going to show the save file dialog. And if a name is chosen, save the picture to the file. Makes sense. And of course, button exit. We're going to end the program. And the code for that, of, of course, is END for end. So that will end the program. So let's first of all um, load the picture into the picture box. To do that though, I am going to come down here and show you a few things. No, I won't. I'll do that later. So what we're going to do is double click on load picture. 
this is what we're going to do. So our load open file dialog box is called OFD image. And if I press the dot, full stop, you'll see it's got all these wonderful things here. It's got all these wonderful properties and events and uh, procedure calls. We're actually going to use this um, show dialog box, which will mean that when we show it, you can't actually do anything other than show the dialog. Nothing else will work in your program while that's open until you close it. And the reason for that is we don't want people accidentally clicking it three or four times, we just want it once. Uh, now what we're going to do is put in our selection to see, check if there is an image loaded, uh, an image selected. And to do that we're going to use an if and something else built into the image list box. We're going to actually see if there is a file name that's been selected. If the file name is greater than nothing, that means there is more than just um, nothing in there, so it's not just blank, then we are going to open the image file. Now to do that, we're going to load the image into the picture box. So the picture box is called pick image, and we're going to use image location. That's this one here. The image location gets or sets a path or URL for the image to display. So what we're going to do there is we're going to set the path to that image which will load it. Now that is stored in OFD image dot file name. That actually includes the path there which is really nice and brilliant of Microsoft to include that in the programming and we'll just check to make sure that works. So hit play wait for it to load. My computer as normal is running really fast. We're going to load a picture and go to the desktop and find good old Mr. Khan. There he is. Brilliant. There's my picture. Um, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't look all that great but the picture is there and that is brilliant. We're going to exit and the end button works as well. So this bit's working. Load is working. That's how you do it. You show the dialog. You then check to make sure there is actually a file selected because otherwise you'll get an error. And then if there is a file you load it into the picture box by using the direct path for that. Next thing we need to do is save picture. So we're going to show the save file dialog and if the name is chosen, save. The, we're basically going to do the same thing. Except in this case, we're calling it SFD image because that's save file dialog image dot show dialog. Same idea. We don't want it to show up and let, we don't want people to be able to accidentally save it six times when they mean only once. We're going to check if there is a file name to save it to, and that's of course an if sfd image dot file name. So we're checking to make sure they've actually given it a file name. So if there is more than nothing, then we're going to save the file. Now, this is one of my exciting finds in um, Visual Basic. If we type in pick image dot image, this one here, dot, we actually get all these wonderful, wonderful things here, one of which if you scroll down, is save. So if I double click on that, it's actually going to give me um, an option file name is string. Now our file name is this one. So that's what we're going to put in there, sfd image dot file name. And that will give us the file name, um, that will give us the save to this file name. So we've chosen the file name in here, in this kind of little area in between showing it and checking it because I forgot to mention these ifs happen after they've pressed OK or cancel. Uh, the program doesn't continue until they've done something like that and the uh, dialog closes. Once the dialog closes, then it checks. So assuming that they've given us a file name, it's going to then try to save the image of the picture to that file. Okay, so let's comment that to make sure that we know what we're talking about. I'm going to save the image to the file chosen. Brilliant. Let's see if that works. Let's press play. Uh, we're going to load the picture. Uh, we're going to look for Mr. Khan. There he is. Brilliant. There he is. Isn't that wonderful? Then we're going to save the picture. Um, I'm going to save it down here. I'm going to call it khan2.jpg. Um, you can programmatically change all that wonderful stuff later. Save. Now, it doesn't chuck us an error, so that's good. Let's press exit. Uh, minimize this, and you should see... Khan 2, there he is. There's Khan 2. Brilliant. Now, uh, let's go back into Visual Basic and have a look. <coughs> you notice that I said that that didn't work that well. Let's have a look at the picture dialog, picture box um, 
properties. Down here we've got this uh, size mode. Now what that does is controls how the picture box will handle image placement and control sizing. So I'm going to go through all these. Normal is what we were just using. Let's look at stretch image. What stretch image will do is take the picture and make it fit to the box. So the box becomes the load. Okay, so notice that it's made it fit. Uh, surprisingly, the ratio on my picture box was great. Let's change the picture box though so that you can see how that works and do that again. So here's load picture. If I want to make it look smaller, um, there we go. It looks smaller. Notice when I save it, it will actually save pretty much the exact same picture. It doesn't hasn't resized it in any way, shape, or form. So this isn't a way to resize it. It is a way, however, to allow people to save whatever is in here to wherever they like. Um, let's resize that again. There we go. So that was stretch image. Um, auto size will make the image actually fit the size of the image. So what it does is it changes the image box, the picture box, to fit the size of the image. The first one changed the picture to fit the size of the box. This one's going to change the size of the box to fit the size of the image. Let's have a look. There you go. So if I resize this, you notice that's how big it is. That's very useful for getting the um, dimensions of a picture using the width and height once you've set that. So that's auto size. Uh, center image, surprisingly, will center the image in the picture box. So what it does is it finds the center of the picture, center of the picture box, and then makes it fit. So up and across. Uh, this last one is my favorite. It's zoom. Now what that will do is actually make sure the picture fits in there, but it won't resize it to fit it. So stretch resizes it to fit the box. This one will just shrink the picture until it fits in the box, and it will always be the same dimensions. Now if I come back here and add a border to that so we can actually see it, which would be nice. So we come back to pick image, put the border style to fix single, press play. There's our box. That actually looks a lot better anyway. Maybe we should have done that from the start. Load picture. Mr. Khan, there you are. So you'll notice there's a little gap there because my box isn't quite right. Not quite the same size. Let's resize it so that it looks completely different. Press play. Now remember this is on zoom, so it's letterboxed it for you. So that's a useful way to actually make a picture fit that box regardless of the dimensions of your box or of the image. It will always fit inside there. It'll, re it'll resize, scale it to fit the box, either height or width, depending on which is the better ratio, but it won't actually change the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio stays the same of the picture, but it fits inside the box. So there you go, that's using the save file dialog box and the open file dialog box. It gives the users a lot more uh, breadth to move your program and just overall helps everything work well. So you've been listening to The Geek Teacher. Join us in our next installment for working with text files. Uh, it won't be that exciting, but basically the same idea as this, but with text. So I'll see you then. Stressless. Be ninja.